So I'm playing a Sony PSP emulator in full virtual reality on my Quest 2 headset. This is such an awesome little emulator. I'm going to show you how you can do that yourself as well as go through a few tips and tricks on how to maximize your experience using this emulator. So let's get to it. This PSP emulator comes from SciQuest. Now I'm connecting my headset to the computer in order to sideload it onto my headset, but that's not the only way you can do it. I'm not going to cover every method of loading content onto your Quest from SideQuest, but there are other methods, including an app that you can download. I'll link in the description the SideQuest installation page which goes through all of the different methods so you can choose the one that's most appropriate for you. But in this video, I'm connecting my headset to the computer, opening up SideQuest, then putting into the search bar PPSSPP. That's the name of the emulator that should come up. Then we just select it and click on the button to sideload it onto your Quest. Wait for it to install and that should be the emulator installed onto your Quest 2, as easy as that. Now go into your headset, make sure it is running or working as it should. And you'll see it give you access to all the folders on your Quest 2. But right now we don't have any ROMs, any games to play. Now I'm not going to go through how to find ROMs in this video. That's something I'll leave for you to do. They are pretty easy to find. The only thing I'll caution about is if you are going to find ROMs off the internet, just be careful about where you download it from. Do your research because there are some malicious sites out there. So once you have your ROM, it might be in a .iso file or a .cso file. Either one works. Connect your headset back up to your computer once more. Once connected, you might need to go inside the headset and select allow when it asks you if you want to give your computer access to the files. So once you've clicked allow, you should see it come up in your file explorer like you can see on my screen here. Now I'm pretty sure you can put the ROMs wherever you like, but I put them in my PPSSPP game folder. So all you do is drag and drop them there. Go back into your Quest headset, open up PPSSPP again, and search for them in the correct directory, and that's it. You should be good to go now. So now you have the PSP emulator and some games to play, let's check out some of the settings. If we go into graphics, uh, you can only choose one backend option, but you can change the rendering resolution. Now, what this refers to is the actual visuals of the game, how good it looks. And if we go up to say 10 times PSP, then what that means is it's 10 times the original PSP resolution. Now you have to play around with this because the higher you go, the more performance issues you might get. So try to find that sweet spot between visuals and performance. Um, so you might have to play around with that little, a little depending on the game you're playing. Then if you are having performance issues, select uh, auto frame skip. That does make a huge difference. You can also choose the amount of frames it skips manually too. Uh, another thing you can do if you're having performance issues is uh, skip buffer effects. Now that can cause rendering errors, but that's something you can do to help uh, with performance. As well as uh, lazy texture caching, I can turn it on and uh, skip GPU readbacks as well. These things help it go faster, but like I said, it can cause some graphical rendering issues. So I'm going to turn them off for now because I don't need them. Another thing you can do if you're having speed and performance issues, enable software skinning. That can help too. Uh, we also have app scale type. You play around with these because these can make the game look quite a bit different depending on which one you choose. Have a play around, see which one you prefer. Also upscale level. So we can upscale the textures, but of course that can also slow down the game. So I'm going to leave that off for now, but you can play around with that as well. In terms of texture filtering, but again, the higher you go with the filtering, the more it affects performance. So I'm just going to leave that off for now. And I like to show the frames per second counter as well, so I can see how many frames I'm getting with uh, the graphical settings that I have. If I go into audio, there's not much here that I like to play around with. Control is pretty standard. You can turn on haptics and vibration. You can also map your controls uh, to your Oculus controllers. Then you have networking, which I don't personally touch. I haven't tried to play this emulator online, but that could be possible, but I haven't uh, delved into that just yet. Now we go to tools, you have developer tools which I don't tend to touch. You can play around with those if you know what you're doing, but for me, I don't see a need to really go into those. Then we go into system. Again, there's not a whole lot here you might want to play around with if you want, but there's not a whole lot here that's essential to having a great experience. You can choose the PSP memory stick folder for saved games and that kind of thing. 
Another thing you can do is change the PSP model. Now, I, I don't think I can change it right now because I'm in-game, but you can actually change the, the model of PSP if you wanted. Um, and the final thing I'll show you is the VR options. Now, we can turn it off VR and just play it as a uh, flat screen experience like that. So if you're getting a bit motion sickness, uh, then that could be a good option to choose. If we go into VR again, we have... I'll just turn VR back on. We have stereoscopic vision, which I don't touch, and uh, I leave the 72 hertz update as it is. Now we can play around with field of view scale. So we can increase the field of view compared to the uh, native field of view on the headset. You can do that. When you do that, it kind of like zooms you out. So if you find you're too close to the person or the character, um, the screen, you can do this and it will zoom you out from the character as you can see here. The only thing is, it does feel a bit weird when you move your head, you get this kind of distortion. The more you zoom out, the more distorted it is. So you play around with that if you find yourself a bit too up close and personal to the screen when you're playing in virtual reality. Now another thing I'll show you, if you go into VR, you also have the heads up display scale. So sometimes uh, things might appear too close to you, and menus and things like that. By adjusting this, you can change the heads up display. So if I, if I put it to, to here, the menu is way too close. I cannot read a thing. So I do have to um, bring myself back into the options here. Go to game settings, VR, Heads up display scale, bring it right back. And that should make the menus way easier to read. There we go, now I can, I can see what I'm doing here. So I wanted to test the first person game in virtual reality. This is Coded Arms, one of the better ones for the PSP. Now I've had to map the uh, square and circle buttons, I think, as left and right analog because they turned me and it just felt natural to have it. Uh, that way. So you might have to change controllers, controls depending on what game you're playing. Good thing about this is where I look, my cursor goes. So if I want to shoot an enemy, I look and then I fire and it seems to uh, fire in the location where I'm looking. So that's a pretty cool feature. I'm on the tutorial of this game. I seem to run into a little problem already. I actually can't change my weapon. Now if I look at the uh, options, we jump into the options here, go to settings, controls. You should see that change weapon is actually left on the D-pad. Now if I go to change my weapon though, nothing happens, I just move around. Uh, this, that's a problem. Now that should, in theory, change my weapon, but it doesn't. So I don't know what's happening there, but unfortunately it means I can't play on because I think I need to shoot this target with a pistol. I can't slip my pistol, therefore I can't move on. So, um, yeah. So I'm playing Coded Arms again. If you do use this emulator, I strongly recommend using a Bluetooth controller like this Xbox one I'm using here. Uh, just for the fact that the Quest controllers don't have enough uh, buttons and options to play some of these games because they really require uh, more buttons than the Quest controller has, basically. But with this uh, Bluetooth, con Bluetooth controller map now, it's been so much easier to actually play these games. Um, so let's see if I can actually change my weapon this time. Take these targets out. Okay, so I kind of another problem. Uh, my the left uh, analog movement doesn't work. Now I don't think my controller's broken. I do think it might be a problem with this uh, emulator though. So I can, yeah, I can't seem to map that whatsoever. I can't seem to map the left. I can do down. I can do. Uh, I can't do up either. Just down and and right for some reason. Uh, this is strange. I still can't change my weapon for some reason. So I'm pressing this on the D-pad. I can reload uh, and do all these other things. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong here, but I still cannot, yeah, I still cannot get to work properly. I have no idea why. So that was my experience with PPSSPP. And there's a few tips in there as well to help you get started. Now for me, it was a bit of a mixed bag. There's some awesome games on the PSP and to play them in VR was fantastic. And with the right settings, you can get even some of the most demanding games on the PSP to run fairly smoothly. Now, if possible, I'd recommend playing with a Bluetooth controller like the Microsoft Xbox One that I use, just simply because the Quest controllers don't have enough buttons for some of the games. So unless you're playing a simple game that doesn't use a lot of buttons, or you have no other option, I think this is best played with a controller. And as you see, I also had some issues trying to get some games to work, even when I had the correct buttons mapped. I'm not sure if that's something I was doing wrong or if there is a bug there that is preventing me from mapping my controller correctly. Either way, if you're willing to invest a little bit of effort setting this up properly, then I think this is a pretty decent VI emulator that I think you at least have to try out. 
Anyway, that's it from me. Remember, if you have enjoyed today's video, to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Thanks for watching as always, and I hope to catch you in the next one. I, I must return fire!